and welcome back to Love Your Food. This week we have a really interesting recipe for you. This is chicken papillon. Now this is a Guatemalan recipe. It comes from the same sort of tradition as a Mexican mole sauce. So it's got a lot of different ingredients. We're going to be roasting them before we uh, grind them up into a paste and we're going to show you uh, how we do this. So here's our ingredients. We're going to start. We've got some chicken. So this is bone in, skin on thighs. We're going to be using an onion, some carrot, some parsley. You can also use cilantro for this. Cilantro is a little more traditional. Some chayote or uh, merloton squash. We've got three different, four different kinds of peppers. We've got cascabel, uh, pasillo, guajillo, and ancho peppers. We've got some sesame seeds, some pepitas or pumpkin seeds. We're going to use some garlic, some grape tomatoes, a little bit of corn flour, actually masa harina, uh, some potato, and we've also got some clove and some allspice just for that uh, really interesting flavor profile. So we're going to get started uh, getting some of our vegetables ready. So the first thing we're going to do is get our uh, chayote uh, squash or merloton ready. So you've seen us use this before. We have done uh, some slaw with this in the past. It's uh, pretty versatile, uh, very uh, quite tasty, uh, melony kind of uh, vegetable. It's a lot like um, a cross between a melon and a squash. It's really interesting. So we're just going to cut this into pretty big pieces. We're going to be stewing these ingredients. So we want them in big pieces so that when everything's done cooking, they're still going to be, uh, you know, visible as what they are in the, uh, in the final dish. Same thing with the carrots. And the same thing with the potato. Now, uh, the potato is going to cook a little slower than the uh, than the merloton, so we're going to cut it into slightly smaller pieces. So everything cooks at around the same speed. And we're just going to leave everything in pretty big pieces uh, to stew it together. And then we're going to take our chicken. So again, this is our uh, these are our chicken thighs. We're going to season them nicely on both sides. Well, we're going to season them on one side to start. And before we get started with stewing these, we do want to get a little bit of color on them because that adds a whole lot of flavor. You get that beautiful Maillard reaction on the outside of your chicken, and uh, that translates into flavor in your stew later. So a little bit of salt and pepper on the outside. So we're going to start skin side down. Get those into a nice hot pan. And we're just going to let those cook for a little while. Uh, to get some nice color. Now while the skin side is down and they start to cook, we're going to season the other side. So this is the perfect time to do that. So once again, a little bit of salt. And some fresh cracked black pepper just to give everything a really nice uh, flavor and help that Maillard reaction go along. Meanwhile, we're going to start toasting our ingredients. So we're going to toss our spices, this is just whole spice, into our cast iron and set those aside. And then we're going to toast our uh, pumpkin seeds, our pepitas. We just want to get these nice and toasty until they've got some nice color on them uh, and they start to pop. Uh, you'll get They'll get a little bit of brown and you'll get that nice toasty aroma. Now for our peppers, we want to remove all the seeds. Uh, so we're going to take all the insides out, we're going to take all the seeds out. Now the... Uh, Tradi more traditional recipe for this is uh, one guajillo and three pasilla or pasa chilies. Uh, we decided we wanted to try a few different things with this. We wanted to try a different flavor profile. So we added a couple of different ones. Uh, but we're going to treat them all the same way. We're just going to take all the seeds out. Now these, of course, are dried peppers. Uh, and what we're going to be doing with these is we're going to roast these. And then we're going to grind them up with our other spices. Meanwhile, we can go back to our chicken. Uh, you can see they've got a little bit of color on one side. Now we can flip them over and get a little bit of color on the other side so that uh, we get all that flavor in our stew as it goes forward. And while that's going on, our pumpkin seeds, you can see they are uh, starting to swell up. Some of them have uh, popped open. Uh, if, we, uh, if you can smell them, you've got that nice toasty smell. And we are going to pop these right into the uh, food processor. So these are going to go in the food processor with a few other uh, toasted ingredients.
such as these sesame seeds. So we really are taking our time to toast every ingredient in, uh, <laughs> almost every ingredient in this, in this recipe as we're working on it. So next thing is the sesame seeds until they got a nice little bit of color. And then that's going to go right into that food processor with everything else. If you're buying your sesame seeds already toasted, uh, they can probably go in uh, like that already. But uh, we got we have just the plain white ones, so we wanted to make sure they were nice and toasty before they went in. We're also going to put all of our dried chili peppers in here to get a little bit of toast on those as well. Get them nice and warm, sort of wake up that aroma. A little bit of sesame seed stuck on the outside. You can see got a little bit of smoke there, but uh, we want to get these nice and toasty on the outside as well. So once you've got a little bit of color on both sides of your chicken, they are going to go into our pot. So this is where this is all going to stew together. Now we've got this uh, neat little um, uh, induction burner uh, because we're a little tired of using those old coils <laughs> on our stove. So uh, we're using this great little induction burner, which really gives a lot of control over heat and everything so we can simmer things for a long time at exactly the right temperature. So on top of our chicken, we are going to add all of our veggies. So we've got our merlaton, we've got our uh, potato, we've got our carrot. So that's all going to go in together. And then we're going to deglaze uh, that nice crispy bits of chicken with a little bit of chicken stock. And that's going to go in there as well. And then we're just going to top this up with uh, a little bit of stock. And also, if you need more, a little bit of water as well. And you just want to make sure that everything in there is covered. So we don't, you just want it to all to be nice and covered so that you can stew it all together. Meanwhile, we are going to go back to our toasting things <laughs> in the other uh, on the other side. So next thing up is our onion. We're going to get that ready as well as our parsley. And again, it's a little more traditional to use uh, cilantro for this, but parsley works uh, well as well. It does give it a different flavor profile, of course. So after we get our last ingredients out of there, so the peppers don't go into the food processor. They're going to go into the spice grinder. And then our parsley is going to go in here just until it's toasty and sort of dried out. So our toasted uh, peppers are going to start going into the spice grinder with our whole spices. So that's going to go in with those toasted cloves and the allspice that we did first. And we have a lot of peppers here, so uh, it's not all going to fit in here at first. So what we can just do is zip it around a little bit until uh, a lot of them have broken down and they take up less space and then we can get the rest in there. So once you've got all your peppers in there, you're just going to blitz that until it's pretty smooth. You want to make sure there are no big lumps or chunks. And then once that is ready, uh, that's going to go straight into our uh, food processor. So we're almost done here. You can see a couple of little chunks left. We did uh, clear those out. We did uh, blitz those up before we finished. Here you can see the parsley, nice and toasty, and that's all nice and dried out. So that's going to go in. And again, the cilantro you would treat exactly the same way if you have it on hand. And now we're gonna to toast uh, the last of the veggies. So we're gonna put our onions in here. As well as our cherry tomatoes and the garlic. Uh, so the recipe actually does call for us to toast the tomatoes until they start to burst open. So uh, that's what we did. While we're waiting for that to happen, the spice mix is going into the food processor. So we're just gonna get that all in there. Now this is going to give an amazing aroma and a fantastic color to our fun little dish with all those chili peppers. And you can see all of our ingredients just hanging out in there. All of our tomatoes are nice and toasty. You can see some of those started popping open. So we're going to start adding these into the food processor. And you can see we've got a lot of nice color on the onion and the garlic as well. That's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. A lot of that amazing, rich, toasty flavor. So This is all going to go into the food processor together. And then we're going to toast 
we're even going to toast the masa flour. So this is uh, masa harina, which is uh, nixtamalized corn flour. And we're just going to stir that around a little bit. You can see it's actually picking up some of the uh, residue from the onions and tomatoes, which is what's giving it its color at first. But it also gets quite toasty uh, very quickly because there's not very much of it. And it's a very hot pan. Cast iron tends to hold heat very well. And you see it get dark quite quickly. So we're actually going to take that out pretty fast. And we're just going to add that right in there. So once all of our ingredients are together in our food processor, it's time to uh, blend it all together. So we are going to put our lid on and we're just going to pulse it to start just to make sure that the uh, blades have a little bit of uh, traction to, uh, to dig in there. And you don't want to add any oil or uh, water or liquid or anything to this. The tomatoes and onions should really be providing a lot of that liquid for you. Always make sure you're scraping down the sides periodically to make sure that everything's getting blended together. We'll get our uh, cover back on once we've scraped down the sides and we're just going to let that go uh, and uh, blitz it up until it is nice and smooth and uh, a really really good uh, yeah there we go that's perfect it's really nice texture really nice and smooth you don't have any big lumps flo uh, flowing around anymore and it will be a very uh, a very thick paste but that's just perfect we're going to add that into our uh, into our stew it's going to act as both a thickening agent and a flavor and coloring agent so it's going to be this really interesting uh, uh, mixture to add to our stew so every once in a while, you do want to check in on your stew. You want to make sure that it is just simmering. You don't want it to be at a rolling boil or anything. You want to make sure that everything's covered by liquid. Give it a little stir every now and then. And you can see just a few little bubbles coming to the surface. That's just perfect. As I said, this uh, is a really excellent uh, tool, this induction burner. Just a fantastic tool to keep everything going. So once you have everything in there uh, cooked just about as far as you want it to go, we're going to take the chicken out uh, just for a moment. Now we're going to set it aside. You can see it's cooked all the way through. So this is ready to go. Uh, if you want, you can even take out the veggies. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier, although you can do this either way because the next step is to add in that paste. So we're just going to add that all in. And it doesn't really look like it's going to dissolve, but it is. It's going to mix into very, very well with all of uh, that stock in there. And um, once you have it all in your pot, just stir it gently. You don't want to give it a, a rough, uh, like you don't want to burr mix it, certainly. You don't want to uh, uh, break up all of your potatoes and carrots or anything. So you just want to give it a, a gentle stir. This is, a, as I said, a little easier. Uh, if you take the veggies out as well as the chicken, although, you know, it does take up more plates. <laughs> and then once everything is well combined, you can see here it's got that really rich red color all the way through. It has well dissolved. It's got a quite lovely sort of silky texture. It's thickened quite a lot already just from adding that paste. And then we're going to uh, give it a taste just to make sure it uh, doesn't need any adjustment. So at this point, you might uh, want to add a little bit of lime juice, uh, certainly a little bit of salt. We haven't really salted much of anything in here. All we've really salted is the chicken. So it does need some salt right now. And we're just going to stir that up. We're going to add our chicken back in because we do want it to cook in here for a little while longer while it reduces a little bit more and comes that sauce thickens just a bit more so that it really glazes your chicken. And don't be afraid if you've got a little bit of uh, uh, juice from the chicken in the bowl that you're holding it in, pour that in. It's all flavor. And then once it's reduced, once it's at a, a place you like, then it's time to serve it. So uh, we're serving it over the uh, sort of restaurant style Mexican rice we did last week. 
and you want to make sure everyone gets some beautiful veggies, everyone gets a chicken thigh, and that everyone gets uh, a lot of that beautiful sauce as well. And it really does have a great aroma, it has a lot of flavor. Um, a great garnish for this is just a little sprinkle of uh, plain sesame seeds on top. Really brings it all together, <laughs> it looks fantastic. And that's it, that's the whole thing. Uh, this recipe does take a little bit of time, it is a fair amount of work. You do have to coordinate toasting the ingredients together with uh, cooking the stew, but it is absolutely worth it, it has so much flavor. Really, really excellent, and we hope we'll, and we hope you'll give it a try. If you like this recipe, please do like and subscribe. And if you have any recipes you'd like to see Chef Caleb try on the channel, please let us know in the comments below. And remember to love your food.